turn that off. Can't be over can't be overshadowed by a fan in my own video. I mean I love my fans, but not that much. Not ready to collaborate with one yet. Lame jokes, lame jokes. Hi, welcome back. Is that my intro now? My room's messy. I I'll solve it. I'll just zoom you in a, a little bit. No? Now you're too close. Do I have to sit back a bit? I just zoom you out. You can deal with the mess. Part of my personality. Welcome to the channel. I got new shoes. Look how shiny they are. Not for long. <laughs> Imi, your ADD is showing. <laughs> Today I'm doing a highly requested... No, the video is not highly requested. It's been highly requested of me to talk about this topic, mainly on my Instagram, but I figured... Instagram only allows stories to be like one minute long. I don't know if you can tell, but this video is a little bit more than one minute long. So we move. Let me just access my notes real quick. Before I jump into it, I just want to give the obvious disclaimers. If you've read the title, you'll see that we will be talking about topics of weight loss, um, which can be triggering for some people. So number one, we're going to be talking about triggering subjects. I'm going to be lightly touching the subjects of various eating disorders. There may be some transformation pictures um, somewhere like popping about. Um, if you are here because you're in some form of desperation over losing weight is all you think about, I will be leaving some resources in the description to various resources. Another thing, obviously I'm not recommending people to go out and try this method of weight loss. That would be highly irresponsible of me. You should always consult your health professional when trying out new things, even if you're changing up your diet. Ask your doctor first. Also, the last disclaimer, I'm sorry that this was very, very long. I am going to be getting into some potentially TMI subjects. I promised that this would be a completely honest and candid and open video, so it is most likely going to get taboo at some point, especially because, you know, we're talking about what we're talking about. On that note, we today are talking about weight loss pills. First of all, let's start off just covering the basis of what I mean when I say weight loss pills. I'm talking about pills or supplements that you can get either over the counter or through medically prescribed means that aim to help you lose weight, whether that be through laxative means, whether that be through um, appetite suppressants, or whether that be through, um, what do they call it? Absorb... Absorption... Absorb... Ab to absorb. Absorption blockers. We'll get more into that later. Obviously, so the main difference between prescribed ones and over-the-counter ones, companies have to adhere to a lot more rules and guidelines in order for something to be considered a medication. They go through much higher testing, they have to be mandated and regulated properly, you will have to go for checkups with your GP or physician. There are multiple things that can make you exempt from being able to take them and stuff like that. Ones that you can get over the counter tend to be cleverly marketed as different things, for example detox teas, we've all seen them. Some of them are marketed as like vitamins. Because they're not considered a medication, they don't have to go through so much testing is what I'm getting at. Sometimes, or at least in America, I know that you can get certain weight loss pills that would be prescribed by a physician that you couldn't get without a prescription. You can get them also over the counter without a prescription. However, the dosage is a lot lower. Um, hello. Where's my phone? Am I sat on it? So, Ali is a lower dosage of the pill Orlistat, which would usually be prescribed by the GP, but you can get Ali over the counter in America. I know at least that is not me telling you to go and get it, I'm just letting you know. It's just a lot more safe. If you're gonna go down any route, maybe go through the one that is actually medically tested. Not condoning that though. <laughs> So now I'm just going to tell you about why I personally went on medically prescribed weight loss pills. I have always struggled with my weight and my metabolism from earlier on in my life, struggling with multiple different eating disorders, being really quite poorly. Um, I was never underweight just because at my lowest weight I was still quite muscular. So obviously we all know muscle weight, blah 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 blah. So I was never technically underweight. But I was definitely lower than what I should have been. I was skipping meals, I was throwing up whenever I could, I would sneak laxatives to the point where I built up a resistance. Then, my first year of college, I sort of managed to be healthy. I really got on top of my eating, I got to a point where I was consuming a suitable amount of calories a day, I was working out a lot, I was just sort of physically the healthiest that I had been for a while. Mentally, struggling. But in my second year of college, my mental health took a nosedive as my PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, absolutely peaked. Those two things 
a mental health nosedive and also a PCOS flare up by themselves are enough to make you gain weight uncontrollably. It merged with me, so I went from, in a year, I think I went from a size 14 to a size somewhere between 18 and a 20. No shame at all, I'm just stating facts, that's what happened. There's nothing wrong with it, but because of my past with eating disorders, that really very much affected my mood. Seeing my clothes start to not fit, already feeling quite judged because I had such low self-esteem anyway, even when I wasn't overweight, you know, it affected my mental health a lot. Fast forward a couple of years, I had remained in that mental health trough, trough? Trial? Oh, it's like when you try and get your Spanish exchange student to like say, like read out the words through, though, thorough. That's me. I was in a mental health tr <laughs> for a while. I want to state this, I want to make this abundantly clear. I have never been an unhealthy eater. I've never been like an overeater. I have been, I was vegetarian from the age of eight. I've been vegan from the age of 17 maybe 18. 18. I've been vegan since the age of 18. That automatically, I'm not saying that all vegans are healthy and all vegetarians are healthy because there are exceptions. I would just always eat healthy because I like vegetables, I like whole foods, that's just what I'm into. But I would just keep on piling on the weight, which is a symptom of PCOS. So at this point I had left college, I had taken my first gap year, and I had been medically signed off for a second gap year because that is how bad my mental health had gotten. Which is when we decided, okay, maybe time to take some action as far as your mental health goes. I got a new GP because my old GP was terrible with anything mental health themed, but maybe that's a story for a different video. I got a new GP and he immediately prescribed me some antidepressants, which I had been trying to get on for years. It's at this point that I started getting massive, massive panic attacks every time that I even thought about taking these antidepressants. God love him, he could not have known. He made the mistake of mentioning that these antidepressants have a side effect of weight gain, which made me spiral. I got back in that headspace. If anybody has experienced it, then you'll know it's an obsession and a paranoia and a phobia of putting on weight. So I could not go near these pills without literally breaking down and crying on the floor and shaking. After a year of trying to take these pills, I had a new GP, a new new GP, who suggested that maybe my mental health issues were sort of all tied back to low self-esteem, which she was definitely right. So we decided that I would start trying to lose weight. I joined the gym in August of last year. It's a picture of me on my first time in the gym. What a baby. So I joined the gym in August of last year. By November, I had managed to lose about six kilograms. I was eating healthily. I was working out almost every day. If you do the maths, it should have been a lot more. Not well, it should have been, but it, the way that things were going, if my body was a normal body, it would have been a lot more. So that is when my doctor sat me down and thought, hmm, hmm, something's not right there. She decided that my PCOS and symptoms from that had made it so that my body would not process fat properly. That is when she made the decision to put me on weight loss pills, or I guess in this case they're more fat loss pills. So that is my why I've been on weight loss pills. My body just does not burn fat the way that it should, so it needs a kick up the ass. So now we're gonna get on to more like my personal medication. I take a pill called Orlistat, which is essentially it blocks your body from absorbing a third of the fat in your diet. It basically means that I can't really eat anything with more than 30% fat. I personally bring that down to a 20%. My little rule for myself is don't eat anything with more than 20% fat because on a vegan diet, obviously, um, I wasn't really eating anything with more than 30% fat anyway, apart from like if I got a pizza every once in a while, but we will get onto a story about pizza, believe me. Um, so on these pills you're not supposed to have anything in your diet of over 30% fat because your body will just, you know, melt it and get rid of it, but not in a nice way. You shit yourself, basically. The thing with these pills is, and with a lot of medically mandated weight loss pills, they are not a be-all, end-all, solve-all of weight loss. You cannot take a prescribed weight loss pill and just sit on your ass all day, eat 
like shit and expect the pounds to just fall off you. They are more a catalyst for what you will already be doing. It takes what you're doing and it makes it more. People see people who have had weight loss surgery, who've had gastric bypasses, gastric bands, who take weight loss pills and think it feeds into the trope that fat people are lazy. Fat people are not lazy. There are many, many different reasons why somebody might be like the healthiest person you've ever met who weight lifts all the time, who eats an entirely like whole food diet, who never eats junk food but they still would be fat. They look at people who've had these surgeries and take these pills and just assume that they're lazy and that they just want to lose weight and not put in any work. If you were to not put in the work while taking these pills, they would have an adverse effect on you. I know that my pill, I could have severe liver injuries from it. Not entirely sure why or how that works, but that is what I was taught by my GP when she first prescribed them to me. I'm so scatterbrained right now. So, as I have already said, I already ate quite healthily. I hardly ever had junk food or anything like deep fried. I worked out a lot. So let's get into any small changes that I would have had to make. I've mentioned that I struggled with eating disorders in the past, which I considered myself not recovered from. I don't think you ever recover from something like that, but I considered myself in recovery from. So I hadn't weighed myself outside of a GP meeting in probably a year. Since taking these pills, I've had to start weighing myself more frequently because if I were to stop losing weight on these pills, but continue to take the pills, they would start having, again, an adverse effect on my health. So that is one change I've had to make and it's been a bit of a shift in mindset for me to try and weigh myself regularly but not let myself get beaten up by it. Again, on a similar note, I did for a little while have to track everything that I was eating, which, again, is quite triggering for anybody who has an eating disorder. I probably should have done it for longer, but, once again, it triggered the fuck out of me, so I had to stop. <laughs> um, just to make sure that I was adhering to the less than 20% rule, or technically 30, but I um, go hard or go home. Another change is I have just, I know I said that I didn't eat much junk food before, I eat next to no junk food now. If I do have any junk food, then I will take a day off my pills because it is not worth the side effects. More on that later. And to be honest, those are really the only changes that I had to make in my personal life. So some tips if you are prescribed a sort of absor absorption blocker like Orlistat, if you're not already eating a mainly whole foods based diet, try and make some adjustments here and there. Eat more of a high volume of calorif calorific veggies and fruits, try and eat less meat and also just get rid of butter. It's too much fat, you can't fit it into your macros even if you try hard. Stop frying things. If you are making dinner and you have something that you would usually fry, I just either roast it or bake it. If it is one of those things that you just, you have to in some way have it in a frying pan, use like fry light instead of like dousing it in oil. Just make sure that you're keeping active, it will stop your body from stagnating quicker because um, you won't be allowed to be kept on the pills if you stagnate. That is the lowdown of the sitch, which are both words I have never used. I asked for some questions on my Instagram revolving around this subject because people talk to me about it a lot. So let's go there and see what people want to know. Okie dokie. Were you prescribed by your GP? What was the prescription process? A GP or physician will not prescribe you a weight loss pill unless you have a BMI of over 30 or if you have a BMI of over 28 but you have some form of other issues that might lead to a difficulty in losing weight, for example PCOS, endometriosis, high blood pressure, diabetes, stuff like that. They will also only really consider prescribing it to you if you've already tried other avenues of weight loss like you've been working out consistently, like you've been eating healthily. Because once again, you need to be able to upkeep those routines as you take the pills, which can be a bit difficult and you will have to sort of do a bit of persuading. For example, my doctor just like, every time that I was weighed, they would be like, oh, you, maybe, maybe you should try exercising more, eating healthily, which is a whole other thing about fat phobia within medical care. Like even 
doctors sometimes just see a fat person and think lazy, which we all know not to be true because we don't live in the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, fat people were seen as better. We don't live in the 90s. But yeah, they were prescribed by my GP. The process of being prescribed them was just that I had to convince her that I had been eating healthfully and working out. It's good if you bring somebody as a witness. My mum always used to come to my GP sessions with me and she'd be like, she eats so healthily, she works out all the time and she's not losing any weight or she's not losing as much weight as she should be, factually. Like, she's burning this many calories a day, she eats this many calories a day, she's in a deficit, why is she not losing weight? Does it suppress your hunger in any way? Because I'd love help with that if they do. My personal medication does not suppress my hunger, or at least that's not supposed to be an effect of it. One thing that I will suggest is I will, I will never suggest taking appetite suppressant pills. What I will suggest is try and eat a higher volume of calorific veggies and fruits. No, okay, I need to get this right because I'm gonna say it wrong. A hundred calories of like butter garlic steak is gonna be physically less than a hundred calories of like a really delicious peri peri glazed cauliflower steak for instance. So look at making swaps like that in your diet, which are going to not necessarily help suppress your appetite, but if you're eating things like that, then if you find yourself with a large appetite, then you're not going to be consuming as many calories, even if you eat physically the same amount. Does that make sense? What are the side effects you experienced? Did you find any side effects? What's been the worst side effect? Story time. <laughs> Around Christmas time, I made the decision to have my first bit of junk food since being on these pills. I had, I ordered a medium pizza from Papa John's with no cheese because I thought that'll get rid of all the fat. And I didn't take the pill when I ate that, but I did take a pill with lunch earlier on that day. So I ate the pizza, no problems, whatever, had a lovely night, good food, you know. The next day was, I think, Christmas Eve, and I decided to go to the gym because it would be nice and empty, and I wanted to use the free weight section because I don't usually use the free weight section if it's really busy because I just find it really intimidating. So I get to the gym, I'm feeling great, had a great night, maybe a little bit hungover, but other than that, I'm just going to lift some weights, I'm going to get those endorphins going, and everything's going to be great. So I do my warm-up and I load some weights onto a barbell to do, I think, sumo squats. So I was doing sumo squats. So after my warm up, I'm preparing to do my first squat and I get to the bottom of my squat and this is where it's gonna get TMI. I get to the bottom of my squat and I shit myself. Not even shit myself. I can't explain to you what it was like without being gross. If you eat something with too much fat in it and the pill chemicals are still in your body, what will happen is it will fall out of you. Sometimes if you like, if you just do a little fart, then you can feel it and you're like, I've just shit myself. Sometimes you don't even have to do that. If you bend funny or if you just sit down, it will just come out if you take one of these pills and you eat something with too much fat in it, which is why you just need to just stay away from anything fried. It was this experience that made me say to myself, right, I'm not gonna have, if I've taken a pill within the last 24 hours, I'm not having anything with any fat in it because it is just not worth the humiliation of having to call my boyfriend while I'm at the gym saying, please come pick me up, I have shit my pants, okay? Nothing, nothing will ever be worth that. So that was the main side effect that I um, experienced with my particular pills. Another common side effect is stomach cramping. I've mentioned a couple of times that I have got PCOS, so I'm not sure if my stomach cramping is ever PCOS related or all of that related. I do get really bad cramping, but who knows what that's from. I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, my ADD is flaring up. A lot about how much weight has it helped me lose, blah blah blah. I mean, hopefully if you're triggered by this sort of talk you would have clicked out by now, but just so you know we're going to be talking about weights here. Before I started my pills, I weighed in at about 110 kilograms. After going to the gym for a bit and just doing my own thing without being aided by the pills, I weighed about 106 kilograms. I started the pills in November and I've gone from 106 kilograms to now I'm about an even 70 but still losing very very gradually now. It used to be like without a fail every month I would lose 6 kilograms, 5 kilograms, something along that lines. 
Nowadays I sort of teeter around the three or four kilogram mark every month, um, which means that I will probably be stopping my journey with these pills in a while because it is plateauing. But at the same time, I'm now a healthy BMI. BMI is a load of shit. What has been the hardest thing? Definitely the shitting myself could have done without that. The other hard thing is I am a sucker for peanut butter and it doesn't tend to fit in with the macros. Um, the other thing is avocado. Avocados are quite high in fat, so I love an avocado, you know, I'm that girl. But it was just quite hard to fit them in with my daily allowance of fat content. So yeah, just figuring out what foods fit in and how and why and stuff like that. It's just adjusting to being more mindful about what you're eating, but also I feel like that's a good thing, like it's always good to be mindful about what you're eating so you're not just like sort of carelessly shoveling food into your mouth and then being like, oh I wonder why I put on weight, but not realising that you're eating like, you know, 2000 calories a day or something. I don't know what's normal. <laughs> yeah, and the rest of the questions seem to uh, either be similar to that or things that we have already covered. Oh no, here we go. Would you recommend them? Um, I would if you are in the same boat as me where weight loss is going to, or you feel like weight loss is going to impact your life in a positive way. What was the question? Would I recommend them? Not to everybody. You have to have such a huge amount of willpower. Like so many people, like I'm, I touched on this in my last video, but all people want to talk to me now about nowadays is like, wow, how did you lose so much weight? And I'm like, just for the sake of transparency, I like to always make sure that people know, like, I'm, I've also been medically aided in this. And then people are like, oh, well, tell me more about it. And I get messages like, what's the name of that pill? I'm going to talk to my doctor about it. I have to always make a point, like, you're going to have to not eat cheese. You're going to have to not eat butter. You, like, basically can't eat any meat. You can't have chips. You can't have takeaway. And then they immediately lose interest. So you just have to be able to be, you just have to be willing to make that sacrifice, basically. Um, and you have to be, you just have to have a lot of willpower, really. It's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I hope that this video was helpful to someone. I just wish that I had found a video like this when I was first starting off with all of this stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Again, not a medical professional. If you have any real questions about your eligibility for things like this or if you are struggling with losing weight always go to your GP first. Yeah, I'm sorry this was so slapdash I got a new job and I was at work all day and that's just a whole stress I'm a bit frazzled. <laughs> okay bye love you thank you for watching bye follow me on Instagram subscribe and everything bye